In that day, verse 26, he says, You'll ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will request of the Father on your behalf. What does that mean? In that day, you'll be able to talk to the Father personally. You don't need to come to me and have me request something of the Father for you. Well, that's been how their relationship worked up to now. Whatever they needed, they went to Jesus. And we see Jesus during His earthly ministry isolated time after time after time after time in prolonged times of prayer with the Father. What was He, what was he doing? He was taking to the Father the requests of His own. But when the Holy Spirit comes, takes up residence in your life, you're going to be able to go directly to the Father. L look at verse 23. He already said this. In that day, you won't be questioning me about anything. You won't be talking. I won't be here. You won't need to ask me. Truly, truly, I say to you, if you ask the Father for anything in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you've asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be made full. Now, when the Spirit comes, you will have direct access to the Father. This is really a stunning thing to the Jewish people. Because God was distant and veiled. God was symbolically in the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies, only a high priest could go in there, and he could only go once a year, and he had to get in and get out fast, or judgment might fall on him. You didn't have access to God. But at the cross, you remember the veil was ripped from the top to the bottom, the Holy of Holies was exposed, and God was saying, everybody has free access to me. Everybody has free access. So Jesus says, look, in the dispensation of the Spirit, in the age of the Spirit, you don't need to ask me. You can ask the Father in my name. What do you mean in my name? Well, this would be how it would go. Father, I'm here because Jesus sent me and told me to come. You have that access. You have that privilege. And that, according to verse 24, is so that your joy may be made full, direct access to God. This was absolutely alien to the Judaism of the time. God was distant. God was far away. You didn't even talk about God as your father. Maybe you talked about him as the father of, of, of all creatures or the father of the nation Israel, but you didn't become intimate with God, and you certainly didn't go to God and say, Abba, Papa, but now, the Apostle Paul in Romans and Galatians says, when you go to God, say, Papa. You're going to have direct access to God. If you don't need me to go for you. You can go. Now, that doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't intercede for us. But listen, He intercedes for us on the matters over which we have no insight and knowledge and wisdom. But what we desire from God, we have direct access to ask for. And if it's consistent with the name of Jesus, the will of Jesus, the purpose of Jesus, the Father responds. That alone sets Christianity apart from Judaism in a significant way. It also sets Christianity apart from Catholicism in a significant way. Catholicism is a kind of New Testament form of Judaism that says you don't have access to God. You need somebody else to give you that access, like a priest. That would be an Old Testament perspective. But in Roman Catholicism, this is what the Catholic Church teaches. They teach and have taught for centuries that access to the Father comes only through Mary. Only through Mary. Let me read Ludwig Ott. This is Roman Catholic systematic theologian who speaks for the church, quote, Mary's intercessory cooperation extends to all graces, so that no grace accrues to mankind without the intercession of Mary. Did you get that? No grace accrues to mankind without the intercession of Mary. 
Continuing the quote, the redemptive grace of Christ is conferred on no one without the actual intercessory cooperation of Mary. You get nothing from God. Mary gets it for you. Jesus says, you don't need me, let alone Mary. You can go directly to the Father in my name, which is to say, I come because Jesus invited me to come. And you say, Abba, Father, Papa. You speak in terms of endearing familiarity. You don't need me to make those requests. I will be interceding for you. I will ever live to make intercession for you on matters about which you know nothing. I will fight the battle on the divine level for you, but you have complete access to God, complete access to the Father. Now you say, well, how could we ever be given such a privilege? How, how have we, are we some kind of noble people? How could that ever be granted us? Now you come to verse 27, here's the point. Why do we have this privilege? For the Father Himself loves you. There we are at that first point, love. Why does all this come to us? Because God loves us. God loves us so that we can go to Him and ask for anything consistent with the purpose of Jesus and know we will receive it. What an amazing truth. What an astonishing truth. All of the riches of heaven are at our disposal. Every good thing God wants to grant us because of Christ. 